Welcome, Welcome back, back everybody, everybody to another episode of Tie and Gig Builds. Builds. This week we built the Raspberry Pi to trigger entrance music via Bluetooth. Stay tuned to figure out how we did that. For all you helium folks, we're sorry. <laughs> we want to we want to be we want to be well rounded. So you know, building projects, tech tech and finance, helium. You know, builds. Guys, we got the Pi, and we have the classic cell phone here. We all have one of those. And when you get within range, if your phone is connected to the Bluetooth, which the Pi will do automatically, bam, music plays, like John Cena music. Like John Cena! This video is kind of a classic tie and gig build. It's very technical Raspberry Pi uh, build project. I'm gonna try my best to explain this in uh, layman's terms and not dive too deep in the code. But the general idea, like Gig said, is once you have a list of known devices in range to be able to connect to with the Raspberry Pi, the first one that it finds and is able to connect to, we're gonna play an audio file based off of the MAC address of that device. In this case, we're using phones since everyone has their phone on them. And then when they come through the room, we're gonna have a program constantly running, trying these different MAC addresses. And when it finally finds the right one that connects, it's gonna play that audio file. Simple enough, the issues you may run into though are the Raspberry Pi Bluetooth kind of dynamics. In order to communicate with Bluetooth, you have to use, uh, it, using Python, you have to use some system functionality and libraries in Python that you might, be, might not be used to. On top of the Bluetooth situation, uh, I found it difficult to actually output audio from the Raspberry Pi. I had to buy this external sound card, which, you know, it's USB, so you plug it in. And then on the other side, you have an auxiliary cable to plug in and then a speaker that you'd like. Um, or you could just do it over a TV HDMI if you'd like that. In using the sound card, we actually had to change the default settings for the system to register the sound card as the device that we want to output sound from. I think the default already for, for Raspberry Pi is the headphones. I never was able to get that to work. And then on top of that, if you have an HDMI, um, you could also do that, but we chose the sound card. So you just want to touch the elsa.conf and just fiddle with the config to make sure that we're pointing to the right sound card. Once that's done, you should be able to output sound from the Raspberry Pi very well, um, but we need to set up the Bluetooth. To set up Bluetooth, Raspberry Pi uses the Blue service to communicate with Bluetooth and other devices. So you're gonna have to first pair your phone with the Raspberry Pi within the UI, uh, just to get it paired first, and then we're gonna use that pairing and try to connect it later in code. You're probably gonna run into issues trying to pair it in the UI. Uh, you need to add an SP profile to the Blue service config first. That will just tell the Raspberry Pi, hey, you're able to connect to this type of device. Um, and so once you do that, you should be able to pair very easily. After a reboot, just going to the, the UI, clicking on the Bluetooth symbol, and connecting to the, uh, the phone. You're gonna have to do this with every device that you wanna use to kind of have entrance music for that device. Once you do that, you're gonna have to find and identify the MAC address for each device that you have and identify you know, which person owns that MAC address. You're gonna have to go in the Bluetooth CTL and just simply look on the scan mode and see which MAC address matches that phone. So once you have the list of MAC addresses and all the devices that you want to connect to and you know kind of which audio files you want to play and you're able to play those audio files, you're now going to go in the code and start programming basically Bluetooth commands through Python. And the way that we're do we do that is we create a bus to communicate with the Bluetooth service. A bus is just simply a mechanism that the Raspberry Pi uses to communicate either service to service or application to application. In this case, we're creating a service bus to communicate with the Bluetooth service since it's a system process. This just entails creating a bunch of different Python objects that represent different things with the bus that you want and identifying the service. It's a lot of gibberish. You can read through the code to kind of get a better understanding how to communicate with the Bluetooth device. Now, since we want to play entrance music when people come in, I create an auxiliary file, which is just a Python, simple Python script, which tries to and keeps attempting to connect to the list of MAC addresses that we had earlier. If it finds the MAC address, it will start playing music and then end the program, and that's how the entrance music works. If it does not, it will keep looping and trying to connect until it fails. Now when this is all said and done and you got your list of MAC addresses and you got your audio files and you're able to pair these devices beforehand, not connect them but just pair them, and you test it and you're able to play audio through the Pi, you can simply run the program and then 
when someone with that MAC address is finally in range, it will trigger the entrance music like so. Build, build. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Holy crap, it's Ty. I knew it was you from the song. <laughs> Boom, just like that, guys. When I enter the party, it drops the beat for me. That's right, nice Raspberry Pi build. Haven't seen really much about the Bluetooth of Raspberry Pi. Next week, we're gonna nice woodworking one. Yeah, we're gonna do a cool woodworking one for you guys. It's getting nice out, so we're heading back in the backyard, bringing out the power tools, and get ready to build. Backyard builds, baby. Builds. Bill!